Hi, I'm Rebecca from ingvid.com. In the past 30 years, I've worked with thousands of students from all over the world to help them improve their English communication skills. In the past year, I've been researching the most important errors and the most common errors made by English learners. And what I've done is I've put all of this information together into a course. It's called Correct Your English Errors in 10 Minutes a Day. I'm very excited to tell you about this course because I really think it's an easy, quick, fast way for you to improve your English and take it to a higher level. All right? But first, what I want to do is tell you what are the points you have to keep in mind when you are trying to improve your English. What do you need to know about correcting your errors? So let me share a little bit of my results from my research so it can help you, okay? And then we will look at specific types of errors and do a little quiz to see where you stand, okay? Let's get started. So first, when you're correcting your English, really you can do two things, right? When you're improving your English, you can do two things. You can learn what's right or correct what's wrong. Now we're talking about this area where we correct what's wrong. So in order to correct what's wrong, what do you need to do? First, you need to know what's wrong. So when I get an essay or I get an email to correct, what's the problem? It's not that the person was trying to make mistakes. They weren't trying to make mistakes. They're trying to do their best, right? That's what you do every time you write or every time you speak. But you didn't know that something was wrong. So first you have to know what's wrong. Then you have to understand why it's wrong. Why is it this word and not that word? Why is it this verb tense and not that verb tense? And so on and so forth, okay? Then you have to learn how to fix it, okay? Is it a spelling change? Is it a punctuation error? What kind of mistake is it? That's what we're going to be looking at, the types of mistakes. Because once you understand and correct a type of mistakes, you will correct lots of mistakes all at once, okay? And that's what I want you to do to make quick progress fast progress. Okay, then what you need to do, which many students do, is to practice it immediately. So for example, if I teach you something in this lesson or in any one of my Ingvid lessons, after you watch it, what you need to do is to practice something with that immediately. That's why we usually have a quiz, right? So that you can go there right away, do some more practice to put that information really into your head and not just to put it passively there, but to use it, right? To, to use whatever you've learned in a uh, practical way. So you need to practice it immediately, but sometimes that's where students stop. They practice it right away, and then they don't touch it after that. And they think, I did it, I know it, but not quite. So what's also very, very important in terms of our brain, in terms of how we learn, in terms of how we remember, is this point here, is that you need to review it frequently. Review anything that you learn often. Otherwise, it's not going to stay with you. So for example, in my course, what we have are we have daily quizzes, we have weekly tests, we have monthly reviews with the same material, okay? So that after a while you say, of course I know that. I know how the difference between it's and it's. I know the difference between affect and effect, well, it's not a problem because you've reviewed it. If you don't review it, then it's going to drop away, okay? So this is an essential part of brain-based learning, of very smart learning. Not just hard learning, but smart learning. And then you need to know what's important. So let's say you get back your essay and there are 20 corrections. So are they all equally important? No. Some are critical. If you make some mistakes, you can get very low marks on your uh, IELTS or TOEFL. You could lose a job uh, possibility, right? You could have a very low grade in university. But some other mistakes are not so serious. They're very advanced kind of technical mistakes that even English learners might make. Those are not as serious. But if you make basic mistakes with verb tenses, if you forget to use a verb, or something like that, if you don't use an article, then those mistakes are more fundamental and more serious. And that's what I've made sure is in the course and also what I'm going to tell you about right now, okay? 
So let's do that. Okay, so let's go through these common mistakes. Number one, everyone is here or everyone are here. What's correct? This is a question of subject verb agreement. So what do you think it is? It should be everyone is here, okay? Everyone, someone, anyone, no one. These are all singular and that's something that is always true, okay? So it's something that once you learn that, you know that you can apply it always, all right? Here we go. Number two, this is a preposition error. I've lived here since two years or I've lived here for two years, which is correct. Do you know? It should be, I've lived here for two years, okay? Do you know why? Remember I said it's not only important to know that it's wrong, you understand? important to know why it's wrong, all right? And the reason why is because we use for plus the period of time, how long, okay? For how long? For two years. And we use since from the point in time. So let's suppose it's 2010 now. It's not, but let's suppose it was 2010 now. Then we could say since 2008, two years before that, okay? But for plus the period of time. So that's a kind of an error that once you understand it, it will be much easier to apply and especially once you practice it. Next, number three. This is a um, mistaken verb tenses potentially. We visited Niagara Falls yesterday or we have visited Niagara Falls yesterday. Okay, so here we have the simple past, here we have present perfect, which is correct in this sentence, or are both correct? Well, it should be, we visited Niagara Falls yesterday. Why? Why can't we use the other one? Because we have the word here, yesterday. Yesterday is a finish time. Once you have a finish time that's mentioned in the sentence, then we can only use the simple past or past simple. We can't use present perfect. We can use present perfect if no time is mentioned, if it only said we've, we have visited Niagara Falls or um, otherwise not, okay? Or if you wanna say this week, we can use it with a time that's not finished. We have visited Niagara Falls uh, this summer, we have visited this week, this month, this year, okay? A time that's not finished, we can mention. All right, next. This is a question of word order. He arrived at seven o'clock at the airport or he arrived at the airport at seven o'clock. And you're saying, it doesn't matter, I don't care. I know, I know, but in English, it does matter, okay? So is there a rule you can follow here? There is. So which one, first of all, do you think is right? So the correct one is, he arrived at the airport at seven o'clock, and this is wrong. And why? Again, the principle. The principle is that we have to mention place before time, okay? I arrived at the party at seven o'clock. I arrived at the airport at seven o'clock. I arrived at the office at seven o'clock okay, and not the other way around. So once you understand the principle, you will be able to apply it when you're speaking and when you're writing. All right, number five. This is a question of comparative adjectives. The weather is better today or the weather is more better today? Which is right or are both right? Both are definitely not right in this case. In fact, one of them is always wrong. Which one is always wrong? This one. This is the only correct option. So if you ever hear anyone saying more better, it's always wrong, okay? And that's because that's the only form. You have good, better, and the best. There is nothing else, okay? So some of these 
you learn by just knowing that there is never a case, there are no rules that sometimes you use this one and sometimes you use that one. No, that's the only option. All right, now let's look at five more from my course. All right, let's do number six. So here we are talking about a car, all right? And let's look at this mistake. This is a mistake in writing. The first one, its tires need to be changed or its tires need to be changed. So here we have IT apostrophe S and here we just have ITS. So which is correct? All right, got it. So it is this one without the apostrophe and this one is wrong because this IT apostrophe S is short for what? Short for it is tires need to be changed. No, we want to use the possessive form of it, which is its with no apostrophe. This is different from lots of other words, okay? So its tires need to be changed. So this is an example of a homophone. These are words which, words which sound the same, but their meaning and their spelling is often different. All right, there are many of these and these can cause a lot of confusion and they are responsible for lots of mistakes in writing. Okay, uh, the next one is an example of word choice, incorrect word choice. For example, we won the other team or we beat the other team. Which is it? Okay, you got it? Okay, I'm gonna write the answer now. Ready? We, uh, uh, we beat the other team, not we won the other team. All right, although people might say that, but that's not right. So you beat a, the other side, the other player, your opponent, and so on, but you win the game. You win the championship, okay? That's how you, you win the match, all right? So win is used with the game or the match or the championship and you beat the other side. So there it's an example of you had to choose the right word, okay? And you have to know that's more of a vocabulary issue. All right, number eight, we're talking about the correct word form. So, you know, like every word, there is a family, right? Every word has a family. There's a noun, there's a verb, there's an adjective, there's an adverb usually. And sometimes people use the wrong one. So let's figure out if you can get this one right. Number eight, can you advise me? Can you advise me? Or can you advises me? Which of those is correct? Now you had a choice of three. Okay. So it should be, can you advise me? Not advice and definitely not advices. Why did I say definitely not advices? Because this word is just wrong. It doesn't exist, all right? It's not part of the family. It is. It, it doesn't exist. This is just a mistake that people make. That is not the plural of advice. This is the noun, advice, and even uh, you can't make it plural by adding s. It's a non-count noun. So we here we wanted to use the verb. So the verb is advise. I know it's written with an s, but it's pronounced with a z sound. Can you advise me? Good. Next. Uh, so this one is just confusing words, confusing grammar, okay? Let's call it. It's so a beautiful day, or it's such a beautiful day. What's right there? It should be such a beautiful day. Because after such, we're looking for a noun or we're looking for a noun phrase, okay? And after so, we're usually looking for an adjective or an adverb. So we could say, it's so beautiful today, or it's such a beautiful day, okay? Again, uh, each of these points you have to master. I'll talk to you about that in a second. And the last one is just expressions that we use. So which of these expressions is correct? Good evening, how are you? 
or good night, how are you? So is there a difference between saying good evening and good night? In some languages, I believe it's not. There's no difference, but in English, there is a difference. So which is correct here? Got it? Okay, we should say good evening. Good evening, how are you? Okay, because good evening is a greeting when we meet somebody and we can use it. We can say good morning, how are you? Good afternoon, how are you? Good evening, how are you? But good night is only said when you're leaving and you're going away. So you're not going to say good night and then say to somebody, how are you? Because it's like the end of the conversation. You can't say bye, okay, see you tomorrow, good night. And you're not talking anymore. You're just going away after that. All right. So there's nothing else. But good evening is when you arrive When you say good evening, everyone. How are you? Okay. And now you're going to start the evening and here you're ending it. So there's nothing more to say. But again, that's something you have to learn. And why is it important? Because here we've talked about just 10 kinds of errors, but actually there are many kinds of errors. And in my course, we cover more than a hundred of them. And the most important thing is we cover them only one by one. Here, in case you didn't get them all immediately, it's because we did a lot at one time. And I understand that. And maybe you understood them right now, but the question is, will you remember them tomorrow? So by doing, by focusing on just one at a time, you can master it and then you can review it uh, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the course, and so on. Also, I've particularly chosen those errors that are the most common, that are the most embarrassing, that will lead to misunderstanding. So if you use one word instead of the other, people might misunderstand, they might get confused. What, is he, what does he mean? What is she saying? So those are the kind of errors that I've chosen. And also these are the most serious errors. Okay, they make you look bad or they make you get lower grades and things like that. So by focusing on them and by mastering them once and for all, then you're done. You've got it. And your English will have improved so much because little by little, you corrected all the different types of errors that really matter. Okay, so if you'd like to know more, okay, click on the link that's either below or above the video. And I wish you all the best with your English. Bye for now.